silly people. File cases here and there. We're so angry with Republic. Republic stole documents to expose the case. Well, we did get the documents. But why is it making you so nervous? See, these people go around and saying that what is happening in this country today and what is happening in this city today is ephemeral. They genuinely want to believe that the scams were ephemeral. They genuinely believe that what happened from 2010 to 12, that the anger that came out on the streets in 2012 was ephemeral. They want to convince themselves that the anger that happened after Nirbhaya was momentary. So let me tell you a story. A person who rose to the highest office in this land. I once met the person when there were protests in this city. And the person said to me, in Bengali, I'm not naming any individual. When we were there fighting for people and we believed in activist journalism, you know I've never held back my opinion. If people are out for a right reason, they're out for a right reason. If people are protesting for a right reason, they are protesting for a right reason. If people are angry over Nirbhaya for a right reason, even if it means that a lot of the people are cleaning their own conscience. Because when so many rapes happened in the city, nobody spoke. But when one happened so terrible, it struck at the heart of their conscience. For whatever reason, they came out. I was called at that time, this particular individual, a cabinet minister, told me in Bengali, Eta ki Mishir, the words were, stood up, red in the face, and asked me from five feet away, Eta ki Mishir, which means, is this Cairo? I asked back, why were they scared? Were they as bad as the regime in Egypt? Why did they fear that Tahrir Square would happen at India Gate? Were they guilty of something? Or did they believe that for a very, very long time, they had disenfranchised hundreds of millions of Indians and ruled in the most cruel manner? A manner in which not even 20% of Indians had LPG connections. A manner in which one out of every three of the poorest people on planet Earth was an Indian. That's why they asked Etaki Mission. That's why what you're seeing today is not momentum. It is not ephemeral. Today, at the heart of the changes in this country, is a section of the media. So I began by talking about the media. The second point I want to raise today is about the right wing. Society has come a very long way in a decade. And there is a voice today that is not willing to be constrained and it has a foot here in Lutyens. And in this new India, there is a palpable confidence of the right. Ideological leanings towards the right are not automatically rendered problematic. And I actually want to say this today, that I think it is very important to be right-wingers on many issues. I have said today, I'm the first person in the media who has said, I'm happy to be identified on several issues as a right-winger. Because if it is right-wing to be nationalistic, then there is a pride in being a right-winger. If it is right-wing to stand for the integrity of this country and say that Kashmir is, was and remain part of India, then there is a certain confidence with which I say it's a right-winger. It's better than being sold out on the Neera Rajya tapes and be followed up with a compliment to Hafiz Saeed. I mean, if you get complimented by Hafiz Saeed, you should quit the profession and leave the country. If you are any shame. You want to then tie up with politicians who want to be media barons? Best of luck. The country will reject you. 
If it is right wing to say and talk about standing for the national anthem and showing solidarity with our brave forces, then I think there is in this country an unflinchingly strong and assertive right wing which is emerging. I stand with them. And if it is right wing to refuse to celebrate Maoists as Gandhians with guns, which a single, single book author keeps repeating, then today in the room next door, when I came in, I wondered, and my friend Tariq Fateh was there, I said I wondered why nobody called their channel Bharat before. Have you thought about this simple thing? When I went in with my license application, some people said, ah, Bharat, huh? Bharat, kyu? I said, why not Bharat? In that simple statement, that question lies a story. We have undermined ourselves and what we are. We have placed India over Bharat. Bharat is the real India. Look at the meaning of Bharat. This morning, a colleague of mine said he received a WhatsApp, and I'll read it out, from Singapore. He said, Bha means light and knowledge, and Rata means devoted, devoted to enlightenment. And call it sentimental or superstition, Bharat has never failed in the history of our land. Bharat as a civilization too is the only living civilization. And yet, we have been apologetic about this name. My third point is, and I'm only, if I exceed the time limit, Shreyasi pick me up and throw me out of the stage. But then, this is a self-inflicted injury. Nothing is beyond questioning today in our land. And I can say with pride that even as a minuscule brigade, half on, half on, bores people about intolerance, intolerance, intolerance. And Nasiruddin Shah's world is limited to Pali Hill. He should not talk much about it. <laughs> I can say it with some facts at my command. Nothing is truly beyond question. And I think that the right to pray campaign demanding the entry of women into temples, shrines and dargahs is the truest example and most recent example. I will tell you two things. Because you have also started shouting. Yes. Not always. Yes. I was very silent when I interviewed Rahul Gandhi. <laughs> No, I was, I was listening. If you do this today, then I assure you, you will not be able to discriminate who's from what religion. You're basically opening your doors and telling people to open the floodgates. Even today, I appeal to the government to reconsider its position on the Citizenship Amendment Bill. And I am with you in this. And we picked it up, we will pick it up strong.